Hey folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Newton's second law. Now you've probably seen Newton's second law written out at some point as F equals MA. And while that isn't technically incorrect, it does sort of limit our, uh, our thinking on Newton's second law. And it gives us some maybe incorrect impressions. It leads us to those, those incorrect ideas. Uh, first, this doesn't really allow us to solve for problems involving more than one force. So if I have two forces acting on an object and I multiply the object's mass by its acceleration, which value of force is that giving me? Is it force number one or force number two? And actually here it turns out it's probably not going to be either of them. The other thing this does that misleads us a little bit is uh, orders the equation so it looks like the force depends on the mass and the acceleration, which really isn't the way that it works. So we typically write equations with the dependent variable isolated on the left side, and the force is not the dependent variable. I can take some object and put however much force I want onto it. I can push it a little bit or a whole bunch. The mass of the object is determined by the composition of the object, how big it is and how much uh, material makes it up. Uh, those things are both independent values. The acceleration is determined by the values for force and by mass, so it's really more appropriate to write Newton's second law in the form acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. Now important to consider here is that both force and acceleration are vector quantities, so we'll include the arrows up on top of those. And it isn't just one force that determines the acceleration, but rather the combination of forces acting on the object, what we would call the net force or the total force. And so now we get to a better phrasing or a better way to write Newton's second law. Let's steer away from that and go with this one instead. Let's turn now to an example of uh, applying Newton's second law uh, to the motion of an object. Uh, it is important to remember on this that when we look at the forces on an object, that can help us learn about the acceleration of the object, but not necessarily the velocity of the object. It would be easy on a problem like this or a situation like this with only one force acting on it to the right to think, okay, this object is being pulled to the right by this force, so that means it's moving to the right or it has velocity to the right. But all we know from this is that it has acceleration to the right. It may right now be moving to the left but slowing down, or maybe it's moving upward and curving over that direction. Think about projectiles, cases where we maybe threw a ball this direction, but the only force on that ball was this way after it was thrown, it was downward from gravity, so the ball would curve downward. Now on this problem, I'm given a mass and a force, and let's go ahead and solve for acceleration to start off. Now I see mass, force, and acceleration only in Newton's second law. So that'll be my clue now and later on that I'm looking for a, a calculation with Newton's second law. Anything, uh, anytime I'm dealing with forces and I'm dealing with some aspect of the motion um, acceleration here, uh, that'll be a clue that Newton's second law is the way to go. So I'll start with a statement of Newton's second law, acceleration equals net force divided by mass. So the sigma symbol here just means we need to add all the forces together that are acting on this object. Turns out this time that's pretty easy. We only have one force. But I also am reminded that these forces and accelerations are vectors. I should establish a direction for positive and negative. We'll say positive is to the right and negative is to the left. I'm looking for acceleration. That'll be my unknown. My net force is the total of all the forces, which here is just that one force, 20 newtons in the positive direction, divided by the mass, which is 10 kilograms. Now, newtons per kilogram is sort of an odd unit. So it's worth noting here, worth remembering, that newtons are really just a shorter way to write the true units for force, or the base units for force, uh, which would be kilograms times meters per second squared. That's the same as a newton. So I'll have kilogram meters per second squared divided by kilograms, and that'll give me just meters per second squared for my units. 20 divided by 10 is 2 meters per second squared, and that's a positive sign there, so that's in the positive direction, or 2 meters per second squared to 
to the right. Now let's deal with one of these problems where we have two forces. So I've still got my 20 newton force to the right, but now there's a second force, 10 newtons to the left. We'll start out the same way we did before. We're looking at acceleration. Uh, we've got forces and mass given to us, so Newton's second law is where we're going to be at here. Acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. Acceleration is my unknown. My net force, remember, just means all the forces added together. Here I've got 10 newtons, and that's in the negative direction. And I've got 20 newtons in the positive direction. Divided by the mass, which was 10 kilograms. Negative 10 newtons plus 20 newtons gives us positive 10 newtons divided by 10 kilograms. Remember, kilogram meters per second squared is the, the long way to write newtons. This is going to give me an acceleration of positive 1.0 meters per second squared. There is, of course, no rule in these problems that will know the value for all the forces and have to solve for acceleration. Let's try one now where we know the acceleration and we have an unknown value for one of the forces. By the same logic as before, I'm dealing with forces and with motion. We'll look at Newton's second law, set up exactly the same way we have so far. Acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass. The only difference now is that we're going to have a known value for acceleration, and one of those quantities we put in the parentheses for forces uh, is going to be an unknown this time. So we have 4 meters per second to the right for acceleration. Let's make that positive 4 meters per second squared. Got my squared originally. We've got two forces acting on the same. We have negative 10 newtons, or 10 newtons to the left. And we have this force that we're calling force A, Fa, divided by the mass, which was 10 kilograms. We need to isolate Fa. We're done with the physics setup. We just have a little algebra to finalize here. So we'll multiply both sides by 10 kilograms. So that'll give us 40 kilogram meters per second squared. Remember, the short way to write that is newtons. And that's in the positive direction. And that's equal to negative 10 newtons plus Fa. And then we'll add 10 newtons to both sides or subtract a negative 10 newtons from both sides. And we'll end up with positive 50 newtons equals Fa. All right, let's try one more problem here. This time written out in words instead of given a, a diagram. Uh, there is a trick on this problem as well, and I'll share that with you. Uh, let's read through the problem first. We have a person lifting a box in this problem, and in lifting that box, they're causing it to accelerate upward. We're looking for the force that the person is applying to that box in order to cause the acceleration that's described. Now, the trick on this problem is that if I'm lifting a box, I'm applying an upward force to the box, but that isn't the only force on the box. I'm trying to overcome this downward force of gravity. So even though it isn't described specifically in the problem, they're expecting us to be able to interpret the situation and know that, ah, gravity's pulling this thing downward. I think it's useful on these uh, to start with a sketch that shows the forces on the objects, and uh, we'll get into free body diagrams for these as well. But for now, let's just think about the two forces on this box. We have, let's see, a 20 kilogram box. And we've got an upward force, I'll just call that Fa, and I'll solve for that one. That's the force the person applies that I apply. Uh, and then we've got a downward force from gravity. Now that downward force from gravity is not a given quantity, so we're going to have to find a way to calculate that. Fortunately, we have a way to calculate the gravitational force that Earth applies to an object if that object is on Earth's surface. And that is going to be Fg is equal to m times g. So the force of gravity, F subscript g, is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity at Earth's surface. So in this case, Fg is going to be equal to 20 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. 
And so that's just going to be a force of gravity of 196 newtons. 20 times 9.8 is 196 kilograms times meters per second squared. That's the same as newtons. So I'll add that to my diagram. Now I see my whole situation. I've got two forces acting on this box. I know that the acceleration is upward and that's equal to uh, 2.0 meters per second squared and that's upward. And uh, I know one force but not the other force. I know the mass. So now I've got a good sense for how, how I need to solve the problem. And it's a lot like the last one we looked at now. Uh, that this gravitational force is known to us. But if we uh, neglected that altogether, if we forgot to put that on our diagram, of course we wouldn't get a correct answer. And if we saw the Fg but didn't have a value for it, then we have an unsolvable equation ahead of us. So, you know, those, those little elements at the beginning, identifying forces and finding out values for ones that aren't given, uh, that makes or breaks these problems. So let's finish this one out anyway. We've got acceleration equals net force divided by mass. Acceleration is going to be upward. I think I'll call uh, upward the positive direction and downward negative. So that'll be a positive 2.0 meters per second squared. And that's equal to, let's see, we've got a negative 196 newtons plus an Fa. And then we divide uh, by the mass, 20 kilograms. Now, if I multiply both sides by 20 kilograms, I'll find on the left side uh, 40 and then the kilogram meters per second squared. So that's going to be positive 40 newtons is equal to negative 196 newtons plus Fa. And we add 196 newtons to both sides and we get positive 236 newtons. Or 236 newtons upward. So again, the trick here with uh, picking out that gravitational force, if you didn't do that, then you would probably just get this number. You'd do the 20 kilograms times 2 meters per second squared, and you get 40 kilograms, oh, sorry, 40 newtons uh, as your uh, applied force. But when we have this on here, we'd see an upward 40 newton force wouldn't be enough to overcome gravity, and we'd have this thing accelerating downward as a result. So as we go through these, sketch them out. Identify what forces are present even if they aren't mentioned. Think through things like, would gravity be present in this problem? Get those on your diagram. Do any of this extra work to calculate forces, values for forces that are on there um, other than what might be given to you. And then we can move on to Newton's second law and plugging in uh, what we know to solve for that one unknown quantity. Thanks very much for watching, folks. Newton's second law keeps showing up again and again. We'll add more different types of forces. We'll add two dimensions to these problems. So we, we definitely grow from here. Get some practice on these for sure, because we'll need to be good at these when we get to the more difficult problems. Thanks very much for watching. If you learned something, please like, subscribe, or share this to people who you think uh, would need to learn this as well. Take care.